Hello and welcome. You're watching Health and Wellness. Save a life. I'm Gargi Rawat. Imagine that someone suddenly collapses in front of you after a cardiac arrest and you can't do anything. It's a scenario that's getting common. Even young adults are suffering from sudden cardiac, uh, from sudden cardiac arrest due to a sedentary and stressful lifestyle. Without immediate recognition and CPR delivery, the chance of survival decreases significantly as each minute without life-saving interventions passes. It has been proven that bystander CPR improves the rate of survival by almost 50%. Save a Life is an initiative through which people will be made aware of the early signs and symptoms of cardiac arrest so that patients can get to the hospitals in time and also be trained on giving CPR if the need arises. Uh, today, we have with us eminent cardiologists who can help you understand sudden cardiac death and the role of CPR to revive and save a life. We're joined today by Dr. Govind Prasad Nayak, consultant interventional cardiologist, Apollo Hospital, Bhuvneshwar. Dr. Madhusudan Asava, consultant and interventional cardiologist, cardiologist, the Heart Clinic, Pune. And Dr. Mrinal Kunj, consultant interventional cardiologist, Paras Hospital, Rachi. Thank you so much, doctors, for joining us. Uh, Dr. Nayak, uh, people often take high blood pressure lightly. What are the possible complications of it on the heart? Yeah, very good afternoon. So, most of the people who have hypertension, they take medications irregularly and their blood pressures remain in high level. So, the high blood pressure not only affects the heart, it can also affect other organs. In heart, if you see the heart, when a blood pressure level remains in high level, it causes a pressure overload of, of the heart. And uh, by that, there occurs concentric hypertrophy of the heart. When the, hy the heart hypertrophied, means thickness of the uh, muscle of the heart get increased, there occurs so many complications. Like, it may cause heart failure, mostly heart failure with preserved visual obstruction, and sometimes it may cause various types of arrhythmias, like ventricular tachycardia. And uh, it also causes increases the chance of coronary heart disease and sudden death. It may cause also stroke. All right. Right, uh, Dr. Nayak, if you can also tell us, it is observed that, that sudden cardiac deaths occur often uh, during physical activity, such as playing a sport or during gym, and more often occur in uh, males rather than in females. So what can cause sudden cardiac death in young people? So, the causes of sudden cardiac death in young people, there are so many risk factors. Uh, if there is a family history of sudden cardiac death, uh, uh, there may occur uh, sudden death in early age. If there is a history of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, they, then this may cause also sudden cardiac death. If there is valvular, <coughs> critical valvular aortic stenosis, that may also cause a sudden death. When there is a history of idiopathic ventricular tachycardia that may also cause sudden cardiac death. So there are so many uh, risk factors and there is, uh, are there for uh, sudden, cardi sudden cardiac death. So those, those people have to be screened as early as possible so that the sudden cardiac death can be prevented uh, in that group of populations. All right. Now, Dr. Nayak, we do know that as the name suggests, it is sudden. But are there any signs and symptoms or that of sudden cardiac arrest which people, uh, you know, are possibly ignoring? What should one look out for? So, uh, if there is uh, the sudden cardiac death which may occur uh, in hospital or it may occur outside of the hospital. When sudden uh, cardiac arrest occurs outside of the hospital, if some people are educated enough, what to be done at that moment? So when there is there is unresponsiveness of the people, they may do cardiopulmonary resuscitation as early as possible, and uh, that is called as CPR. And uh, the CPR, if it is done as quickly as possible and effectively, uh, the uh, life of the patients can be uh, saved. And uh, in hospital uh, setting, we can also do the CPR as quickly as possible. So by that we can save the life uh, effectively. 
And uh, Dr. Nayak, so who survives sudden cardiac arrest after resuscitation? Uh, will the survivor then be able to resume a normal life? What happens uh, post a cardiac arrest? So this is a uh, tricky question one because uh, if the after uh, sudden cardiac arrest, uh, if the CPR started as early as possible, as we know, there is a rule of 10. So the CPR should be started within the, within 10 minutes and earlier is the better. And uh, it should be continued at least for 10 minutes. So early CPR and effective CPR can save a life uh, uh, definitely. And uh, if you see the post cardiac arrest uh, sequely, so it depends on the uh, means pro uh, duration of the cardiac arrest. It, by that what happens, there are so many injuries occurs to the brain, hypoxic brain injury occurs post cardiac arrest. If patient, but patient is survived, but there occurs hypoxia to the more uh, prolonged hypoxia to the brain, so that patient may remain in a vegetative state, so that the quality of life may be hampered. Uh, those who are survived from the cardiac arrest by effective CPR1. Lack of CPR awareness is a big health challenge in India. If you could tell our viewers, what are the main steps of CPR? So, uh, the, there are uh, basic steps are, uh, of the CPR. Are, so, first, you have to assess whether patient is dead or alive. That means patient is responsive or not responsive. To know that, uh, you should give a thumb to the chest so that if patient is alive, there is some reaction will be there. And you can put your finger over uh, uh, at the uh, nose so that if there is warm breathing is there, so there is uh, some life is there. So you should do the CPR as quickly as possible. Better to put the that uh, patient to a hard floor, not a uh, bed or a couch. Uh, where there is a hard, uh, means floor is very hard, you keep the patient there and uh, you kneel down first. And uh, you, you should interlock, interlock your fingers and uh, make your uh, uh, upper extremity, means both uh, arm and forearm straight and give a push, and push over the center of the chest of the patient. And the rate of the pushing should be 100 per minute. You should do effectively and at a speed of 100 uh, push every minute. So you should continue it at least for 10, 10 minutes so that uh, the uh, patient uh, may survive. So this is the effective CPR one. So we uh, most of the, uh, we teach the uh, non-educated or uh, technical staff to do like this. So by that we can survive the patient. We'll slip into a short break and return with more. Welcome back. You're watching Health and Wellness Save a Life, where we're talking about heart health and uh, about creating awareness regarding CPR. Let's go across to our doctors. And Dr. Kunj, is performing CPR legal in India? Are there any specific guidelines for use of CPR in India? Uh, uh, yes, uh, that's a nice question about the legalities and all. Uh, what is recommended for a common public is like compression only life support. We have uh, many complex life supports are also there like BCLS, ACLS, but that is recommended only for medics and paramedics. However, for the normal population, a layman who doesn't, uh, not much aware of these things, it is called as COLS, that is compression only life support. They need to give only chest compressions. If at all they detect a cardiac arrest or some event like unconsciousness of a, any uh, standby or bystander, only compressions uh, are required, chest compression. That is like for 120 times in a minute, that is recommended. Uh, apart from that, he can, uh, he or she can check the airway of these uh, patients. So uh, earlier on, there was like, some mouth to mouth breathing was also advised, uh, but nowadays like cultural, ethical and moral issues are there. So only compression, chest compression is what is recommended in India. According to Indian Resuscitation Society, there is a society for it. They recommend only just compression for it. 
All right, Dr. Asava, how does an automatic external defibrillator help a person who is in cardiac arrest? Yeah, look, basically automatic uh, external defibrillators or AEDs are they are more popularly known as. They are used to revive someone from sudden cardiac arrest. Look, one has to understand basically that unlike a heart attack, which is caused by a blockage in an artery to the heart, sudden cardiac arrest is caused when the heart's electrical system malfunctions. Now, this produces an abnormal heart rhythm, which we call as uh, arrhythmia, that makes the heart unable to uh, that. Now, converting this arrhythmia to its normal rhythm by an electrical shock is called defibrillation. It is where our uh, automatic external defibrillator comes into play. What it does is that it used in time it can be life saving. And AED basically is a computerized medical device. It is a small, lightweight, battery operated, portable defibrillator. And uh, what it does is that it can analyze the heart's rhythm. And if necessary, it can prepare a shock or defibrillation, like we call, uh, thereby helping the heart to re establish an effective rhythm. Yeah, that's all about it. All right. Uh, Dr. Nayak, can you damage someone's heart if you perform CPR while it is beating? If you could, you know, tell us what to watch out for. So, if a person, normal person, by any, uh, because of any cause, he uh, becomes unresponsive, but uh, his heart is beating, but someone uh, bystander or standard, uh, he cannot recognize whether heart is beating or n not beating. So, uh, if someone has started the CPR, the, uh, uh, there is some or negligible or non, uh, any injury, injury to the uh, patient occurs. Because uh, if you do CPR, there might be some uh, uh, fracture to the rib if it is done forcefully. Otherwise, there is negligible or nothing will happen to the patient if uh, his or her be uh, heart beats normally and you do the CPR. All right, uh, Dr. Asava, people survive a first heart attack but are at increased risk for another one. So what precautions uh, should they take to reduce the chance of a second heart attack? Obviously, the mantra is to take medicines properly. But primarily making lifestyle changes is the most effective way to prevent having a heart attack or having another heart attack. Of course, quitting smoking, eating a heart-healthy diet, controlling your cholesterol, exercising regularly, limiting your alcohol intake, and uh, keeping a tab on blood pressure and blood sugar. I think this goes without saying. Also, after a heart attack, a physician is likely to prescribe you medicines, and it is important to take the medications as prescribed. And it's no rocket science that it's critical to keep regular medical, medical appointments with your doctor and uh, monitor key risk factors such as blood pressure. So if you follow these simple steps, I think you go a long way in avoiding a second heart attack. Right. Uh, Dr. Kunja, what are the signs and symptoms a patient should be aware of post-angioplasty and what to do in a case of emergency? Yeah, that's a good question. Actually, most of the post-angioplasty uh, patients, we do advise to take proper care as described earlier by our uh, fellow doctor. At a, a proper dietary control, uh, diabetes, and blood pressure management. Apart from that, the symptoms that might uh, be of concern might uh, be like new onset, any new onset of chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, or uh, history of palpitation. Such complaints should be uh, noticed. Otherwise, uh, after like acute phase, after one month or two months or so, uh, the stent is getting endothelized. So not much of worries after uh, two to three months. But in an acute phase, as the patient is just discharged, at those times, you should be very cautious of taking medicines, the blood thinners, the aspirin, clopidogrel, and other medicines, what we prescribe for that. In the later phase of, uh, after post-angioplasty phase, uh, there is a risk of re-stenosis, the narrowing of the vessels. But that is like uh, uh, the patient will have symptoms of like chest pain on exertion, on walking, on climbing stairs. These symptoms should be shouted. If any warning symptoms among these are there, then you should consult your cardiologist to further evaluate these things. Right. Uh, Dr. Naik, nutrition and healthy eating are also important aspects of any cardiac rehabilitation program. So what types of foods should one eat, avoid uh, for better managed uh, cardiovascular disease? Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> As uh, my colleague has already uh, spoken about the risk factors, means uh, for a 
prevention of cardiovascular disease. There are some uh, some non-modifiable risk factors are there. Some are not modifiable risk factors there. So among the modifiable risk factors, nutrition is a uh, important uh, part which can uh, by which we can prevent the cardiovascular disease. So what are the foods we can avoid? So first you should restrict the salt intake and you should consume more vegetables and fruits so that it contains minerals and antioxidants and uh, you should also uh, take low fat diet and uh, it is better to avoid uh, ghee, butter, cheese, malai, fatty meat and egg yolk and uh, you should use mono unsaturated fatty acid or polyunsaturated fatty acid containing oils like sunflower oil, soybean oil, olive oil and it is better to avoid coconut and vanaspati ghee. So these are the nutritional aspects for the prevention of cardiovascular diseases. Besides that, others like you should uh, consume uh, less alcohol and uh, quit smoking, control diabetes, hypertension, avoid stress. These are the other modifiable risk factors so that uh, the cardiovascular diseases can be prevented. Right. Uh, Dr. Asawa, it's observed that certain cardiac deaths often occur during physical activities such as playing a sport or during gym and more often in males than females. Uh, what, can, what causes this uh, sudden uh, cardiac death? Look, uh, basically when sudden death occurs in an adolescent or young adults, it is uh, sometimes or most of the time due to undiagnosed heart conditions such as genetic heart diseases. Now, what happens is an undetected heart problem may cause a young person to suddenly die during physical activity, such as playing competitive sports. Now, any condition that puts a strain on the heart or damages the heart tissue can increase the risk of sudden death, actually. And uh, some of these conditions that can lead to sudden cardiac death in young people or, uh, uh, let's say, thickened heart muscle, which we call as hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or a heart rhythm disorder, or a massive chest injury while playing, Congenital heart defects. Congenital heart defects are basically where the mixing of pure and impure blood or some other uh, congenital abnormality of the heart function. Also, other than these congenital factors, most people who are indulging in a sedentary lifestyle that involves incessant smoking, drugs, drinking too much alcohol, obesity, lack of balanced diet, irregular sleep cycles, and uh, being involved in a high stress work environment. Uh, I think this all have increased the risk of having a sudden cardiac arrest and can easily lead to the other medical conditions and complications too. Uh, one more factor is that people who have already have a family history of heart disease and diabetes also have a high chance of suffering the cardiac arrest. All right, thank you so much, uh, doctors, uh, you know, for talking to us and answering all our questions about this very important issue of heart health and creating awareness about CPR. Thank you all for watching at home. Goodbye. Thank you.